50. Online at Community Mortgage STL. Community Mortgage LLC. APRs in the threes. NMLS 224-143-250-353. Jamie Allman. Allman in the morning. Glad that lawmakers are demanding to see the Comey memo because this is where we have the media dead to rights. We need to drown the swamp, not drain it, and we're going to push their heads right underwater. On FM News Talk 97.1. You're listening to The Mark Cox Show. Follow the show on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Mark Cox Show. I thought uh, Willie Nelson was probably the most appropriate uh, theme music for this segment. I couldn't help myself. I had to cue up uh, one of my favorite Willie Nelson tunes there. Uh, we're talking about the issue of marijuana becoming increasingly legal in different states across the nation. I mean, right now there are only a few, but it seems to be on the ballot just about every year. I know it's going to be, I know there are several petitions that are circulating in Missouri to try to get it on the ballot here again, not only for medical marijuana, but to legalize it, period, uh, for people over 21. It poses some issues for business, though. It really does. And it was recently the um, the subject of a conference right here in St. Louis. We're joined today by Brian Bauer, uh, who's a, a counselor and a consultant for uh, for corporations, and uh, Michael Lowenbaum, who's an attorney. He's a management labor employment law attorney. Welcome into the program. Thanks for Thank having us. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, Brian, just let me get you to pull that mic a little bit closer to your mouth there, because make sure we can pick this up. Uh, first of all, tell me about the, the, uh, the conference and the people that that attended it, and what kind of brought them together? I mean, there's some big issues here, right? Some big questions. Sure. So uh, I met Michael um, a few months ago. Um, he was actually honored for a Foundation for Finding Blindness for a friend of ours and an employment attorney, and we started talking about um, a lot of our uh, clients that we have and just the uh, struggles that they're having of what to do when people come up positive and things like that within the workplace. So I work with them as a counselor uh, and as a consultant for the HR, but Michael works with them on the legal aspect of right. what to do with that. So so these were representatives of, of businesses yes. in states that already have legalized marijuana and then obviously in some from states that don't because uh, I guess you're trying to learn some of the lessons that some people are already going through. Absolutely, here. and yeah. we're learning a lot of those lessons. And uh, so a lot of our companies have a, a presence here in St. Louis. Um, but they're nationally uh, across the the country. So Drury and Scott Trade Center, a lot of different companies like that. Wow, uh, Michael, let me let me bring you in on this because um, th- this obviously has a lot of legal ramifications. If a company based in, let's say, for example, a state where marijuana is not legal has it as a company policy that you do drug screenings for marijuana, and then you have employees who live in a state where that suddenly becomes a legal product, it. it, it What's the quandary there? I mean, the well, clearly. The, qu- the quandary is really not a quandary because <laughs> you can continue to have a zero tolerance policy in states like Colorado and Washington. Uh, there's nothing that protects the employees from pre employment drug screening, or there's nothing that's not lawful to come to work with detectable levels of marijuana in your system if that's your policy. Right. The quandary is that so you have a, you know, it's still a violation of federal law, it's still a Schedule One drug. They still haven't found uh, the, the connections to the medical mer- or the medical uh, purposes to make it, you know, that would make them see their way to not make it a Schedule One drug. So you have, in all these states, you have a state law that gives some rights, and then you have a federal law which says marijuana is not permissible. So the problem that the companies have in these states is they're having a harder time finding people because if they continue to have a zero tolerance policy, and they t- continue to screen, they're going to screen out a lot of uh, uh, candidates who may have been qualified and acceptable otherwise. So that's where the quandary comes in. Yep. You know, what do you do? And uh, most of our clients have continued to stay with their policies because of the links to um, accidents that could occur, to people being impaired at work, uh, all these different things. And so it, it's a it's a real quandary, and it, it's more difficult because – 
you know, alcohol is a legal drug, but you can't come to work drunk. Well, true. And yeah. so, and so, even if it's a legal drug, you know, the problem is you can blood test someone, and you can get a blood level, you know, reading. And then there's laws, or there's DOT regs, or OSHA regs that say certain things are impermissible. But with marijuana, of course, you you can't tell if someone's impaired or under the influence because it's you know you can you can have a policy that says. You can't have detectable limits at a certain level, but that's all you can do. And the, there's not really a breathalyzer right now for for THC not. or whatever, that, right? That, yeah. that could that could that could that could find him. That could register impairment. Right. And then it's, think about this: it's even more, Mark. It's even more difficult because now you have edibles and you have vaporizers and you have cookies and you have uh, drinks, and so someone could be sitting right across from you. At work, you know, getting uh, ingesting THC, and you wouldn't even know it. And so, and those could be your coworker, and that's the guy who may run the forklift right into the wall next. And you that's know? a real problem, Mark. Uh, we're, what we're seeing is national average of people using marijuana while they're at work is five percent, but in Colorado it's twenty percent, and in Washington it's twenty three percent. So that's people using while they are on the job. Wow. So so again. Um... T- tremendous liability issues for companies who would have no way of screening for that, as Michael said. Right. But what you said, the majority of companies haven't changed their policies. But ultimately, will they will it get to the point where they're either going to have to, or the employment rates in some of these states are going to skyrocket? Right. right. Well, I, I read an article this morning, uh, and, and uh, that uh, a big construction company in Colorado is actually having to go out of state in order to find employees. Um, and I read another article about two weeks ago where they're really kind of uh, targeting the immigrant uh, population because they typically don't use as much as hmm. Americans do. So their hiring practices are having to take a big change. Wow. I see you've got lots of uh, bar graphs there and things. What, what what are some of the things you presented to to these companies uh, in this well, conference? Well, Michael did, uh, did the presenting, Michael and uh, Jamie Westbrook from his law firm. Uh, but what, I think what we're seeing, and again, on employment aspect, um, industrial accidents because of marijuana are up by 55%. Uh, disciplinary problems over 50%. Absenteeism, 78%. Injuries, 85%. So these are the numbers that we're starting to see that we're learning about what's happening in places like Colorado and Washington. Is it, uh, it as we talked about, you, you can't come to work drunk. You should know that you can't come to work stoned. Um is it a toler- I mean, is it a tolerance level? Because I, I don't have any background in this, but I'm guessing that if you take, if you give somebody a blood test to, to find out if they have traces of THC in their blood system or whatever it, it might be, is is there a, a level they could set that at where they say if your if your levels above point three zero or point five zero, right? Yeah, it, th- at that point it's unacceptable. But below that, we're not going to do anything about it. Absolutely not. Okay, that's the problem. Okay, so you, if you smoke marijuana every day, not at work, but at home after work, uh, just like you have cocktails, right? And, and all weekend, you're going to have uh, a detectable levels that are going to be far in excess of any screening mechanism, and that person may be. Uh, have not be have any uh, effect of the marijuana at work, but they're going to have it in their bloodstream. Uh, so if they get tested, they're going to test positive. So it's not the same. No, it's, it's not the same as uh, as you, what you would do with you know with the shorter acting drugs like cocaine and so forth like that. That stays in your system much shorter. So if you would get a high reading on that, there's probably a much greater likelihood that there's a there's some kind of connection between the level and your state of mind. Well, Whereas in marijuana, there isn't. Yeah. And, of course, again, it becomes, as you said earlier, 20% of the states are legalizing it. So you still have that conflict between the federal law and the state law. So what's gonna, what it's going to take is a change in the federal law, or it's going to take a, uh, employers who can't find anyone. Or I think you, as more millennials become uh, leaders in HR and in companies, they're probably going to bring – a different attitude than us old people. That was leading to my next question. Is that kind of the direction uh, you think things are going to go one of these days? Absolutely. Absolutely. We see it all the time. So the, the, the younger generation, there's there's a lot of myths out there that we have about our, uh, marijuana, that it's not it's harmless, it's not addictive, it's medicine, it's 
Um, you know, we're putting everybody that's smoking marijuana behind bars, and it's not as bad as alcohol, and uh, we're going to make so much money on the taxes, but those are really <laughs> myths. They're not act, they're, they're not facts. Yeah. Well, they don't want to believe it's an illegal drug, but it's still an illegal Schedule One drug under under the federal it, law. It's a quanta. You, you make choices every day in life. You choose to drive drunk or not to drive drunk. People who want to use marijuana are going to have to accept these limits, at least for now. That seems to be well, the, and Mark, the message. In- we, we need to remember the half-life of a drug. So a half-life of alcohol is 48 hours, depending on what and how much you drink.